Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edmund Ironside and we've made it to Act 1, Scene 2. Huzzah! And you know what? We're going to finish Act 1, Scene 2 today as well because the entirety of the scene is this monologue that we're going to hear from Edricus. Now, Edricus, remember, is an Anglo-Saxon who has sworn allegiance to Canutus. And in Act 1, Scene 1, when Canutus is like, well, I wish everybody thought this way, Edricus is the one that was like, um, don't you remember when I did this for you and I did this for you? and I did this for you, and you wouldn't even be in a position to try to claim the throne if it wasn't for me. Like, hello. And Edricus was also the one when Canutus was like, so do we attack Edmund Ironside now? Edricus was like, look, you got to rule these people with an iron fist, um, which is not the tack that Canutus decided to go with. Uh, they all went and had dinner anyway. Um, but also at the end of Act 1, Scene 1, once Canutus and Edricus and a whole bunch of the train had left, Leofric and Tercillus were left behind, and there was a little bit of talk about how they feel that they are of a higher status than Edricus is, but they are less listened to. And actually, both of them have children who are being kept captive by Canutus, which is why they've been loyal to him for sake of their children, but they've decided now that they're going to defect and go side with Edmund Ironside, and if they have to have more kids later, they'll have more kids later if these ones get killed. So that's sort of where we are and who some of these characters are. And Uskatolf, if you remember, is very much not a fan of Edricus. He called him all sorts of horrible names in Act 1, Scene 1. So in Act 1, Scene 2, the scene is the monologue and the monologue is the scene. We get Edricus comes out on stage by himself and he says, what shall I think of him that means to beg, and can thus finally live upon his wit? I was as mean as any basely born. Fine. Say not so. It will discredit thee. Tut. <laughs> no man hears me. Aye, but think not so, for it will make thy peacock's plumes fall down if one such abject thought possess thy mind. Tis strange to see how I am favored, possess my dukedom and Canutus grace, and the chief of all his counselors, when as my betters are exiled the court, being discountenanced and out of grace. They cannot so dissemble as I can. Cloak, cousin, cog, and flatter with the king. Crouch and seem courteous, promise and protest. Say much, do not. In all things, use deceit. Tell troth to no man. Carry tales abroad. Whisper close secrets in the giddy air. Be a newsmonger. Feed the king with sooths. Please all men's humors with humility, which he must do that is a courtier, and minds to keep in favor with the king. <laughs> he that had heard my story from the end, how many treasons I have practiced, how many vile things I have brought to pass, and what great wonders have been compassed by this deep-reaching pate. <laughs> would think I was, I had been bound apprentice to deceit and from my birthday studied villainy. <laughs> I understand Prince Edmund's up in arms, lays hold upon occasion's sluggy lock. And whilst Canutus here securely sleeps, he wins with ease what we with pain have got. Mass. If he do, and fortune favor him, I will so work as I'll be in his grace, and keep my living and myself unhurt. But if Canutus chance to gain again, then I am his, for I can glose with all. And yet, indeed, to say the very troth, rather of both, I love Canutus best. For Edmund's father first did raise me up, and from a plowman's son promoted me to be a duke for all my villainy. 
And so often, as I look on him, I must remember what he did for me, and whence I did descend, and what I am, which thoughts abase my state most abjectly. Therefore I hate him, and desire his death, and will procure his end in what I can. But for Canutus, he doth honor me, because he knows not whence I did descend. Therefore, of the two, I love Canutus best. Yet, I can play an ambidexter's part and swear I love, yet hate him with all my heart. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on in this one. First he comes out and he's like, you know, the people that are supposed to be beggars but have gotten really far in life just by being clever, he's like, ha, 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 ha. oh, that's me, I was very big. And then he's like, oh, crap, people might be listening. And then he realizes he's by himself, so he shares with the audience his whole thing. But he does give himself a little bit of like a mental health check-in. He's like, no, 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 don't be thinking that you're not as good as anybody else because even one thought like that can undo everything that you have going on. But he's like, you know, it is a little bit weird that I'm favored being from a low birth as I am, whereas all of these people who are more highborn than I are exiled from Canutus court, where, it, you know, like, I'm, I'm the favored one. And then he's like, it's just because they don't know how to play the game. They don't know how to lie and flatter and cheat and spread rumors and gossip and, and be a yes man to the king. Like, they don't know how to do all of this stuff that you're supposed to do as a courtier, but I do, and I'm awesome at it. And if somebody knew everything that I've done throughout my life, they would think that I, w I was born a villain, that I've been studying villainy my entire life because I'm so good at it and I've been doing it so long. And then he switches over and he's like, you know, I hear that things are actually kind of going well for Prince Edmund, or at least Prince Edmund is getting the stuff that we want much easier than we are. So he's like, maybe I'll go and, and try to get into his grace just so that I'm protected and not on the losing side. But if Canutus starts to win again, then I'll come back to his side. Because if I'm being honest, I like Canutus better than Edmund Ironside because Edmund's father raised me and knows that I was just a plowman's son. And every time I see him, I'm reminded of my, my lower station in the world. And I know, I know that Edmund knows where I came from. And I hate him for that. I hate being reminded of that. And, it, you know, it, it gets into my head and eats at me that he knows who I was and what it has taken for me to get here. Whereas, Canutus knows none of that and just believes in me on merit. So I like him better. But he finishes off this by saying, you know, actually though, I can go both ways and I can suck up to either of them and make it appear as if I love them while I actually loathe them in my heart. I love the fact that the word ambidexter is used here, as in ambidextrous, you know, able to go with both, able to do things with both hands. He says, yet I can play an ambidexter's part, which I think is, I don't know, it's just a, a fun word to me. So it's, it's not quite was ever woman in this way wooed, but it is very much the, the villain sharing the I'm a villain, I'm going to side with whichever side is maybe going to win in this whole thing. I'm going to do what I have to do to keep myself safe, is what that is. So yay, exposition, act one, scene two. But that's also the entire scene. So we've made more progress getting through the play today than we have in the last week and a half. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for more as we dig deeper. Mwah.